Seven, double two, double three, double four. Sam is a Peterborough fan. He's dialed that number. Good evening, Sam. And commi- I, I mean, I feel like saying commiserations. I suppose a point isn't a bad point, but when you're tuned up with five minutes to go, it, it must feel like a defeat. Evening, Jason. Evening, Dean. Evening. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I would have oh. taken the point at the start of the night, a hundred percent. But it, it feels it feels like a defeat tonight. It really does. Um, we've got to put it mildly. We've got to learn how to see see games out like the big teams do and grind out results and put men behind the ball. Mm. And Entertaining think, watch though, Peterborough. It's like watching Leeds. It, it, it was, it was, and the fans haven't had much to cheer about away from home all season. We've only scored about five or six goals away from home before tonight all season. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, we started off sort of status quo, sort of humping the ball up at the start of the first ten minutes. And once we got our goal, we just played with confidence and played them off the park. And as soon as they scored their, uh, their first goal and got back into it, we went back to sort of making silly mistakes, just humping the ball. Um, I don't know... Clark Harris, I don't like to pick players out. He divides, divides opinions amongst fans, but he's got the fitness levels of Barney the Dinosaur. Yeah, well, I mean, Adrian Durham's a massive Peterborough fan. Yes. I'm sure he's listening. He's, he's yes. been out all night. He must be he, devastated. He, he had cramp after about 70 minutes, and he's the only person we've got up front who can sort of hold the ball up and eke time away. As mm. soon as um, Birmingham pull one back, we take him off, and we make two substitutions when all the players are absolutely blowing out. Mm. With six, with four minutes to go, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I think those, those sort of games, it, regrettably, say it. That's, that's where relegation sort of uh, won and lost. Yeah, that must. That's a, a tough pill to take. That one, Sam. After you know, travelling away. Well, a couple go. of things happened, Sam. Like at, at the end of games, it's been going on since the history of football. Late goals. Uh, teams throw caution to the wind and just go mm. for broke. And the team that are winning. Obviously, game management and certain rules that you do in the last ten minutes of games that you wouldn't do in the mm. in the other eighty minutes. Which, for example, you don't start playing football in front of your own goalposts no. with five minutes to go when you're winning. You don't throw the ball inside. If mm. your strikers don't give fouls away because they just pump the ball into your box, so the players have to take a bit of responsibility as well because you should be seeing that game out. Yeah, hundred percent. We had to sit. Um, it was just before they got their first goal. Our, our striker, a young lad, he's just made a David Moore and he had the ball in the sort of final third. I was, I was screaming at him to go to the corner. Even though we were 2 0 up with a few minutes left, just go to the corner and eat time away. And they, they sort of wanted the third and they get the ball, and two minutes later they get one back. Yeah, that changes the game. It makes you laugh. He, they can't get four points. You're all you're already two 0 up. You've, I say <laughs> the game's to, over. The game's say won. to the place. What are you trying to score again for? Yeah, yeah. You can't because exactly. if the ball goes in the keeper's hands. He's going to pump it down the pitch. We can't get four points. <laughs> exactly. Sam, I don't know whether you've heard, but we're actually looking back over your, uh, the club's history, that a moment that you would change, that you would, you would alter with your hindsight wand in your hand, that you'd change, obviously for the better. You're not going to you know, get your side relegated. Really what would you do, Sam? What, 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 what most Peterborough fans look back at and go, that's the moment I would change forever? Oh, that's a good one. Um... I think 2013, when we got relegated from the championship last last time, uh, I think we would have done what we should have done tonight and put 11 men in the goal. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have gone down, and we would have been we would have been the prem by now. Oh, that's a big bold statement. Cheers, Sam. Thanks for the call. Peter Bree in the prem. Can you imagine that? Yeah, well, they're not a big club. I think Darren Ferguson over the years has done brilliant yeah. for the club yeah. and the owner. Yeah. You know, he stayed yeah. there a long time. He has. He has. And they they bounce up and down, but not. Like I remember a few years back in the championship, they were giving everybody a run for their money, playing a diamond in midfield. Right. Nobody could cope with it. With mm. some really good players who went on to better things, and Darren Ferguson's team, he, he he's put teams together, probably four or five teams, and spent hardly anything. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. Let's go and speak to Richard, the Nottingham Forest fan. Richard, good evening. Evening, Rich. Good evening, well, I mean, what what a turnaround your club has had since. Since the, they they changed managers there with Chrissy Hewton leaving, who clearly just couldn't get for whatever reason. Chris is a good manager for whatever reason, just couldn't get a tune out of these lads. But Cooper's come in, and it's been unbelievable, hasn't it? I mean, I'm, you, you have got a serious chance to get promoted this season. Well, you've just taken the words out of my mouth. I mean, it's um, it's just bizarre, isn't it? How one man can just change a club 
like that. You know, the, he's got the fans going. Uh, the atmosphere is absolutely brilliant. You know, the players know their jobs. You know, they're all motivated from the start to the end of the game. Um, everybody's playing for the shirt. Mm-hmm. It's it's just it's just it's fantastic. And uh, long may it continue. Um, as a Forest fan, you always feel a little bit uh, on edge. You know, you can still be sort of uh, 3-0 up and you're kind of thinking, are we going to blow this? But it actually seems to be a little bit of belief. And, uh, and yeah, we've seen games out. The guys all know what they're doing. You know, they know their positions and uh, they know their jobs. And Steve Cooper, he's... Uh, He's just great, isn't he? Yeah. He just yeah. speaks from the heart. He, he he knows his job, and he just you can just tell he loves loves the club, and you know we've all embraced him. So it's yeah, it's great. It's good times. For the rich, for those who don't know his journey that he's been on, Steve Cooper. I I know his journey, and I know him. He was he was youth team coach at Wrexham. He started off at Wrexham youth team coach. He got a job at Liverpool in the academy. Done well with the academy, but he's always asking questions. So he'd ask Brendan Rodgers to watch the first team training and the Spanish coach who's now at with Pep at Man City right he was working with the under 23s and sort of the bit of the first team so he learnt off him learnt off Brendan he then went and got the job with England for the under 17s and won the World Cup also he's learning off Gareth Southgate he's going and watching Steve Holland and Gareth Southgate taking the first team training he then gets recommended for the Swansea job by Brendan and Gareth Southgate he does the Swansea job, does brilliant so with that well, group of players, yeah, yeah. and then he decided that he decided that the player that the, the club were going to sell his best players or not give him enough money or offer him less mm. money as best players. So he resigned, and luckily for Forest fans, he ends up he's there. at Forest, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and I think he'll either take Forest into the Premier League. Or he'll end up there himself. Himself, yeah. Soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're He's close. done great. You're very close, very close. Rich, listen, thanks for the call, bud. We're asking fans a question that what would you do, change very in your club's history? Now, there must be a few as a Forest fan, right? But there's one that Richard can have if you were to change the, the, the path of history. What would it be? <laughs> Oh, I, I kind of like living in the present, gents. It's, there's so many. There's been, it's yeah, been no, 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 I know that. We'll, we'll, we'll like live in the present, but this hard, one, Rich. Come on, Rich, play ball. One thing I could change, you know, I would have loved to have seen Pierce succeed as manager, I suppose. Right, OK. All right, yeah, legend going back there. Thanks for the call, Rich. Keep them coming. 03717 22 33